Nimtza Hore Gatshul Nerfa Eglor. 47 on the bottom. Nimtza Hore Gatshul Nerfa Eglor. They found the murderer before they decapitated the calf. Takes a vitira bay there. So you let the animal is let to graze with the regular herd. Mission Nerfa Eglor. What about they already decapitated it? Tikovi Bimkoma. Shasafik Bosa, it's buried on, it's considered Yisra, no, you're not permitted better, be, benefit from it. Mitchilosa Kipro, Sveiko, Volcholo, because since initially it's unclear what's going to be, so therefore, since when they decapitated it, it wasn't clear whether, whether they can locate the murderer or not, therefore it takes on a forbidden status. Nerfo Eglavakach Nimso Horek, what about they decapitated and then they found the murderer? Harizi Horek, the man has to be killed. You'd say, well, when you when they bring the uh, Egla roof, what do they say? Kaper, Kaper Yisroel. This Kaporos, so maybe the murder is, is atoned. So Morrison say no, the murder is not atoned. Klaus shows atoned. Right. But the murder, when they find him, he's going to be put to death. You Morrison can bring a pasuk. What happens if a sin, what about if you know who the murderer is? Then you don't bring Egla Rufa. It's only if you haven't located the murderer. Yeah. A single witness normally is not believed. Let's say one witness says, Reisi is a horeg. I know I saw the, the murderer. Vechrome lo reisa. The other one contradicts. Says, no, you couldn't. You were with me. How did you see him? Isho meris reisi. A woman says, I saw the murderer. A woman's not normally qualified to testify under any circumstance. The isho meris lo reis. And the other one says, no, you did not see. Hoy orfim. Then you bring the Egla Rufa. I mean, neither are believed. But since why are they not believed? Because it's contradictory. But let's say it would have been one alone. It seems to be you would not bl- you would not bring the Egla Rufa. Let's say once, as I saw the murder, and nobody co- contradicts it. Good. You would you would not bring the Egla Rufa, even though normally one single witness is not normally believed. The murder is Eda Chorome Reisi. A single witness says I saw the murder. Shnei Momedor Reiso, and two witnesses say you did not see. So who, you always believe because you believe two to one. One is is considered relevant. Hoy orphan, you bring the Egla Rufa. You decapitate it. What happens two said we saw it and one says you did not say see it one means nothing presence of two of course then you don't bring it because we know factually we know who it is. no we don't even though they don't they don't remember who it is but we said we saw the murderer mm. it's only if the murder was never known right once there was an increase of murderers murder was rampant bought like La Rufa. It stopped. They stopped. Why? So Rashi explains because when, when you had people, let's say, were gangsters, they were murderers. Mm-hmm. If a person was killed, you knew exactly which people were, were, were the, who, who, who did the murder. Yeah. So we know. So therefore, it's always, you know who the murderers are. Mishabo Eliezer ben Dinoi, Uschina ben Prisha, Hoyanikro, I'm going to try to read this. One second. Lamid. Yep. Chazul the Krosu Ben Aratzchon. This person, they called him the Tchinah Ben Prisha. They started. They used to call him Ben. He's the son of the murder. How does he explain it over here? Just that little piece. Um, I was a well-known murderer in the Shemitic Times. Yeah. He was notoriety. He adopted the alias to him within Parisha. So people then stopped referring to him by name and simply called him the murderous son. <laughs> the murderous <laughs> son. Okay. Mishrabul. There's an alternate opinion says they were two separate people. Right. Mishrabul right. Nafim. When when uh, adultery promiscuity became very rampant, Poskan Maima Morim. They stopped giving the soda to drink the water because mm-hmm. people they were all the Marshal called Psukim. Rabbi Yochan Zakai. Hifsikon, and it was Rabbi Yochanan Zaki who stopped Shinemar. Lo efkor al benosechem, I will not acknowledge your daughters. Kisiv neno, because they they commit znus, they commit acts of licentiousness. Val kalosechem kisno feno, and your daughters-in-law they commit adultery. Kihem, mishmeis Yosef ben Yosef Shreiv Yosef ben Yochanan Ishu Shalayim Botlo Heshkolos. Heshkolos means a person who's the the great dimensional person. He has, he's totally multi-dimensional in Torah. When these two individuals passed away, the Bali Eshkolos, the word Eshkol means they contain everything. Shnemein Eshkol, Lechol, Bechura Osa Nafshi. Okay? Bechura Osa Nafshi, Chof, Ifso. 
Okay? So when these two individuals, that was the end of the era. If a person didn't distribute the various tithes, you have to say it's called Vidi Miser. Right? The beginning of the, the, the begin, end of the third year, the beginning of the fourth year. He stopped it. Afu Bitel, Esamorim, Vesanokvim. Also, he, he stopped. So, what's this? Raj, what second? Rashi. Umar will explain what it is. Okay. Ajama for your Patish Makam Shalayim. Until his time, they would do, they would be a patish. There would be physical labor as noise. And he stopped it. So Rashi says, and the, there were blacksmiths who would work on cholomoid. They work on cholomoid. So normally, if a dover over, if something is a loss, you're permitted to do it on cholomoid. But what about if people don't know that? So you do something on the QT. So we say it doesn't disrupt you. But if, what happens? People here. The black from the shop going continuously. Mm. Do people know whether it's a dover of it, not a dover of it? They say, look, it's, re- it's business as usual. As a result of that, he stopped it. I feel dover of it, they call it national merchant, they call Yodi, she dover of people don't know, and they'll come to violate the Cholomoid. Okay? At one time, he says, he's the one who, who, who decreed, who enacted, that if you purchase grain from an Amoretz, you treat it as if it was never tithed. Mm-hmm. Until then, you had to ask, did you tithe it now? You buy it from the Amoritz, the presumption is you treat it as if it was not tithed. It has to be tithed. So how do we know that if they decapitated the calf, then you found the murder, how do we know that if they calf, then you found the murder, how do we know he's not exempt? Because it says the word kapora, the land will not be atoned for the blood that was shed. The only way you could atone it, you have to shed the blood of the murder. The one who shed the blood, his blood must be shed. shed. Uh, shed. A single witness says, I saw the murder. So what's the inference of the Mishnah? Because it, his testimony is countered. One says, Reisi, the other one says, Lo Reiso. But it seems to be if he would have been contradicted. Even a single witness would be believed, and you would not bring, bring, bring the Egla Rufa. For Egla Rufa, one witness is sufficient to prevent the process from taking place. Does that mean also that they don't ex- they do execute No, no, murder. it has nothing to do with execute and murder. Two separate. So you two might separate. not bring Rufa. No, whenever you find a murder, you have to, he'll be convicted two witnesses, that he was forewarned, otherwise you can't kill him. Even if you find witnesses, you can't kill a murderer unless he was forewarned. Okay? Here it's being normally one witness means nothing. We find a corpse. If you totally give no value to testimony of a single witness, it's like there's no witness. So how do we know that you give some degree of value to a single witness? To quote, right? How do we know? It says, It says, Nobody knows who, who smote him. So it seems to be nobody, but it seems to be. Even if there's one, wherever he may be, that's sufficient to cancel the process. If the Sanhedrin saw somebody commit murder, but they don't recognize the murder. They don't recognize who he is. They can't locate him. Mm-hmm. That we don't decapitate it. The, the Kev Talmudoma, they said, what did, they, what did the Zikanim say? Our eyes did not see. But if their eyes saw, although they can't locate the person, that's enough reason that you don't have what? You don't have the Egla Rufa. I Valoro. If we say a single witness is believed, now we have a problem. A single witness says, I saw the murder. Then another witness counters him. We say they cancel each other out. But the the Gemara asks, if a single witness has the status of two, the second one who says you did not see is is like one against two. Mm -hmm. And a single witness doesn't stand in the presence of two because we give the the credibility of one like two. That's the Gemara's question. So if he, we give credence to the first one, the second one is the qu- only one, how could he ca- count, counter him? Whenever the Torah believes a single witness, it's a, he has the, the credibility of two. So the one who counters him, it's like one going against two. So why does the Mishnah say that if he's contradicted by one, you do believe the Egla Rufa, 
Amaloch Ula. So Ula answers, Tani Lohi Orphan. Just the opposite. You say Lohi Orphan. You do not. The Mishra should not read, they would decapitate. But rather, you, it's the Mishra should read, you do not decapitate. Because since the first one has the credibility of two, the second one totally is overridden. The mission should read, they did not decapitate it. Reb Chia Matini Hoyof. Reb Chia argues, says, no, the text of the mission reads, you do decap. That means they cancel one another out. So the Mariah's question, Ula Reb Chia Kasha to Ula. But how do we reconcile Ula's statement? Ula says, whatever the Torah gives credibility to the one, it's the equivalent of two. So the one who counters the one, it's like one against two. Lokash Kam Vasach, Kam Vasach Hazer. Hear this? There's a difference. If they come together at the same time, which the first testimony was not accepted, and the second one testifies immediately within Toche De Dibur of the first, so the first one never took on the status of two. When do we say one is the equivalent? If one comes to testify, and we accept his testimony, so he's established this two. Now, a single one comes to counter it, we ignore him. But what happens if they showed up simultaneously in court? They came together, and we hear both what they both have to say, then they cancel one another out. That's how Rabbi reconciled it. Tenan, we learned in the Mishnah. A single witness says, I saw the murderer. And two say, you did not see. So what's, what does the Mishnah say? It says, hey, orphan. And then you do decapitate it. Because it's two against one. So you ignore the testimony of the single one. But it seems to be two, one against one. Even if one had said it independent of the second one, you would, you, you would not. It's, it's a contradiction. It says, Two saying you did not say once as I did say. So it seems only then do you decapitate it. But if it would be the other way, you would not. Two of the drabchia. So it seems the drabchia is refuted. So you see, we don't differentiate whether it's vasachas or not vasachas. Or tamer and this is the corner. You're avas. Let's say the conclusion is shnayim omrim reinu. If two witnesses would say we saw the murderer, vechon omer vechon. The eight echor omed lo reason, and the single witness would say they did not see. So we have two against one. Two witnesses say we saw. One says he did not see. So one doesn't stand in the presence of two. It says in the mission lo orphan, which makes sense, right? Because they said we saw. Two witnesses say we saw, but it seems to be hochad v'chad hoya orphan. But if we won against one, you would. I we just finished saying that what that when you have one against one, the one has credibility. We're speaking about not kosher witnesses. When do we say that one has the credibility of two if he's a kosher witness but he's only a single witness? What about if you have women? A woman's not a qualified witness. Let's say a woman would say, I saw. She's not, she's not. Elamastis kula The mission is speaking about psuliedus. They're not qualified to test under normal circumstances. Whenever Torah says you believe a single witness, then you go after majority. You hear this? If it's a qualified witness, one is two. What about we one is two, you only have women who are not qualified. And let's say you have three women testifying against two women. Then you go after majority. Okay? Majority prevails. You go after Rov Deus. Vosushte Noshim. And they said two women are kish echot. Two women is like a single man. Kishnea Noshim Bishechot. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so what are you talking about? It's like two against one. He said, let's say initially a single witness, a male came, and then a hundred women come afterwards. So what are they? So it's, the one is, is equivalent of two credible witnesses. So you could have a hundred women come afterwards. What do we do? We totally ignore them. The women, the women came first. And then the single one, Betirzo, the Rem Nechem Yehochi, Rem Nechem Yehochi, Komok Shemino Torah Erechor, Halacha Harov Deus. Whenever Torah believes one, a single witness, let's say women. So let's say women come, V'osu Shtei Noshim Yisha Achas, Kishnei Anoshim Yisha Echod, Avo Shtei Noshim Yisha Echod. Let's say you have two women testifying against the single witness. When they came simultaneously, Ki Palga Palga Domi. Right? It's like, it's, 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 it's like 50-50. What do we have to have? Give two cases. We, give two, we have two cases of psuli edus. Maybe when do we go after the majority? That's when we mean machmir. Okay. Mishra wrote him. It says when the, there was an increase of murderers, they stopped the, the Egla Rufa. 
because they basically knew who the murderers were. Torabon Mishrobo Avrotzchonim, Botlag La Rufa, the fish, any boy, Elo, Allah Sofik. Right? Because why? Because you only bring it because you don't know who the murderer is. Mm-hmm. But if you want to know, if, if you find somebody dead, the mafia definitely killed him. So once you know the mafia killed him, so you know exactly where it came from. Mishrobo Avrotzchonim, Begolui, but when? It became public knowledge. It's not people unabashed who would commit murder. It's not a person killed on the QT and you found the corpse. Openly they would go and they, they would murder people. Yeah. It's begolu. It was open. Whatever when people began, began to commit adultery yeah. and incest, yeah. incest, it says they stopped to, to give the mayim morim. A woman wasn't given the water. Turn around on it. It says, It says, let's see a woman, she becomes a suspected adulteress. And the husband wants to give it a drink. Let's say the husband himself is not so pure. He himself has illicit, illicit relationships. The water will not check out the wife. Because it says, Viniko mm-hmm. ishmi If the husband is pure from sin in this area, then the water works. But if he himself is no tzaddik, and we'll see, he doesn't even have to commit adultery. He has illicit relationships. The water will not work on his behalf. Viniko ishmi yovon, bismachi ishmi nukumi yovon, amayim botkim. If he's cleansed from sin, then the water will verify whether his wife was an adulteress or not. Okay? Both kids ishto. Eino ishm nukami oven, but if the husband is not pure from sin, ena mine both kids ishto. The water will not. Then, of course, the Omer, another posik, lo efkod al beno sechem kisis neno. I will not verify regarding your daughters when they have illicit relationships. My, what do we need the second posuk? What, what does the second posuk get to the first posuk? What about he's pure, but his, in his family, his children don't behave properly. And now he has a question regarding his wife's behavior. It's, it's not going to work. It's not only if he's not, even if he's clean for of them, but if his children and his family, they don't behave properly, the water will not. So the second posuk says, it's not only if he is, even if his children don't behave properly, the water is not going to verify. Toshma. Maybe it's only with the children to commit adultery. What about if they just have illicit relationships? Mm-hmm. Is that enough reason to make the water ineffective? If you personally are what a makbid to behave, your behavior should be above reproach, mm-hmm. then the water is going to bring about the miracle. My love, vim love, ain't my boat can shake him. Bishop Robu Bole Balehano, when people became hedonists, right? This Absu Hadidim, the, law, the, 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 the laws became corrupted. So Rashi says, what's the reason? Rega. Rashi says over here. What happens? You have a rabbi. And somebody has a mishaila. And the guy, he spends a few hours on the golf green. He takes out, you know, he has to drink his uh, daily wine and this and that. He has like, he has like a pampered state. He doesn't apply himself properly. So when you ask Mishaela, he doesn't really re- research the, the question properly. So the Psaki gives is not a proper ruling. So because so what interferes? Why isn't he fully committed to his profession? Because he's distracted. His, what's his distraction? He, ha- he lives high in the hog. Yeah. So he says, mm-hmm. The laws became corrupted. Not the courts, the law. Because the research to come out with a proper aloha, it's not being researched sufficiently. Okay? And as a result of people, they don't behave as proper Jews. They don't observe Shabbos properly. The kash, nothing is, pro- is, is, is proper. And then God says, you know, I have no pleasure from this world. Jews aren't living as proper Jews. So what does Hashem do? He, he withdraws from the world. What about people, they, 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 they favor one defendant over another. So what happens again? So there's no such thing as, the Torah says a judge is not permitted to be intimidated by any defendant. But let's say 
the one defendant pays him off and or whatever it may be, yeah. it becomes a problem. The court, the, 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 the court system becomes corrupted. Okay? Uposek lo sakir, uparku ol shemaim. Venosalem ol bosavidom, what happens? They, they, they revoked, they re threw off the yoke of heaven. And what, what yoke is on them? The yoke of, mor of the mortal. Mishirabu lochei lechishos. You know what this is? You know, according to Jewish law, you know, we don't have lawyers. You have lawyers, you know, the lawyer knows the judge. He whispers, whisperings in the judge to, to, for his client. So mm -hmm. automatically the, ju the judge favors his client over someone else's client. So what kind of judge is this? Mm -hmm. The judge is not impartial. So he says, Mishirabu lochei lechishos. When they had this, this intervention of judges, they're called orchi dayanum. Orch din in Hebrew is a lawyer. This increased Hashem's wrath on Klal Yisrael. And the Shechina removed it. It says, when God's present, that's when you have the judgment. What about if God removed himself? Because it's all corrupted? There's no, there's no Mishpot. Second, Mishirabu Achrei Bitzom Libam Mishirabu Achrei Bitzom Libam Holech Rabu Omel Ra Tov or the Tov Ra. Yeah, there you go, Zion. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where's the heart of the judge? Whoever paid him off. Is, 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 is bribery. So in what happened? People said, evil is good and good is evil. So they praised the evil and they, they, they criticized the, the, the good, the good ones. When that increased, what happens? It became woe in the world. Because things are bad. You stop praising the evil. It's woe. It's interesting. The Chavetz Chaim says, he speaks about, there's a negative commandment. You're not permitted to flatter a person. Mm -hmm. so he speaks about a case where a person speaks Loshon mm -hmm. and you're present. And not only don't you criticize him because he's a wealthy man or he's an upstanding person in the you smile and you shake your head like you're agreeing with him and sometimes you even throw in a few extra words. It adds a little fuel on the fire. So the Chavetz Chaim says, it's bad enough that you're not giving him Musr and you're in violation of Hochech Tochei Samsech. He's supposed to give you your, your fellow rebuke when he does the wrong thing. On top of that, you, you praise him and you say to him, it's to, what you're saying is correct. He should have been, he should have been reprimanded. So that's what it's being. You call the Rishoyim special and the tzaddikim, you know, they're, they're archaic Jews. So Hashem said, the Navi says, it's hoi hoi, it's woe. As the, it's, bad, it's bad times. It's not going to be good. Mishirobu Moshe Harok. Robu Hayihirim, Vinnismatu Atalmidim. What's Moshe Harok? Rashi says, Arichan Harok Umidis Gaiva. That's something to do with the saliva. <coughs> it's the way they move the saliva around in their mouths. Nisvat Abin Kaimadon, Similagasasuruach Anishal Torah. When people became, their whole behavior became arrogant and haughty, they were less Talmudim. Because if a person has the, the meat of arrogance, they have no relevance to Torah. <coughs> okay? Vatorah Choseres Alom Deo. Mechazeres ulai timtzolim lomdeo. 
How does he hear that? And he says, Vatorah chozeres alom deo. How does he explain that? And the Torah goes back to those who study it. So Rosh says, maybe they'll go back. Machzeres ulay timselom deo. How does he explain that? No, it says the ones who are with, with the saliva. Oh, it says spitting a far distance in public is a sign of arrogance. Okay. It demonstrates lack of respect for others. Yeah. It indicates feelings of superiority. Okay. So as relative to less students. Rather than, seeking, rather than students seeking out the Torah elsewhere, from our states of poverty and Torah knowledge. Is yeah, and, w- w- and then what it says, and Torah returns to its, those who study it. What does that mean? Um, our Shah explains that Bryce refers to people who pretend to be very pious when in fact they are not. Okay, no, no, I understand that. But, but it concludes, Torah returns to those who study it. So Rosh says, maybe. Maybe it'll go back to those who study it. I'm not sure what that means. doesn't say anything on that. Okay. When people increased, those, the arrogant people, the haughty people, that, Heschidu b'nos Yisrael li nosei lihirim. Shein doreinu Roer elephonim. You know, people. What became the, the, the what became the end? When people when people started to value arrogant people, people who are haughty. So the women started to marry those kinds of men. If that's what you value, that's right. If that's what you value, so who do you right. think the women are interested in marrying? They're interested in marrying those kinds of people. Okay. Because how does the how does the judge how does the generation judge it? Everything superficial, superficiality. We said a person who's arrogant, even his his family doesn't like it. They reject him. Shenemar, gever yoyer v'lo yinve v'lo yinve afilu b'novi shelo. Yeah. He, he, even his family cannot tolerate it. A man who's arrogant, even his family can't tolerate it. How could you tell him when they became arrogant, when it increased? That became the standard. People are attracted to that. We <coughs> learned that a person's arrogant, even his family cannot tolerate it. This arrogant person. He says, May Koro Kopzo Lei, the Sov Mizel You hear this? Initially, the woman's interested, but after she marries him, you know, she, he treats her. Because of his arrogance, he, mis- he mistreats her. That's when the, the family cannot tolerate The wife cannot tolerate the husband any longer. Yeah. You know, in, I- in Europe, it was a very serious problem. My Roshiva told me, like, even before, right after World War, World War I, you know, even women who came from <coughs> observant families, they wouldn't want to marry Yeshiva Bachar. They saw him as, you know, backward, archaic, uneducated, you know, he can't earn a living. And they have no way. So who did they marry? They married people who weren't 100% observant. And as a result of that, the families weren't raised. They never observant families. The children weren't. You know, because the one who had the... dressed a certain way and the, with the style and everything, that itself was an indication he was on... on he was literally had one foot out the door. That's, the women are attracted to that. But after they married, what do they have? They have nothing. But he was seeing arrogance the other way. The women are mistreated. The arrogance of the husband initially, he courts the woman, the woman's attracted to this. Once he has her in her clutches, then he starts mistreating her also. What's Moli Miloi? You hear what happens? The judges, they give some of their they're uh, merchandise to, to people to invest for them, to take care of that. They have like asylum partnerships. So now what happens? So now they have, the judges have a vested interest to right. actually to defend these people. Right. Of course, they have a conflict of interest. That's what it says. Now all of a sudden, bribery increases. And there's actually it's a corruption of, of, ju- of, ju- of justice. And God withdraws goodness from the world. The bracha is taken from this world. 
בשרובו מקבלוני טובוסכו ומחזקני טובוסכו. רובו איש הישר מעינוב יאסר. שווילם הוגבו והגבולם הושבלו. ומלכוס עז לו ונב לו ונב לו. What is this? שהרוע דהיר מסבירם לא פונם מיני טובה שאוסלו ואין עם ישראל שווה להם הוגבו שאין אימס הגדול מעל הקטנים העניקה בן גבוהו מלכוס מלכוס של ישראל אוסלו ונאווה הולך ומסנבלוס. תראו מה קורה כשאנשים רואים שהשתתה לא משהו that e that the people who are more powerful have control over the judges mm -hmm. so what happens yeah people start doing what they want because they see there's no rhyme or reason the lower ones are are empowered and the whole the whole kingdom becomes totally uh, starts de de deteriorating Rashi says שאין אימס הגדול למעלה קטנה והעניקו בהם בן גבוה לשופר מלכוסה מלכוסם של ישראל אז לו ונב לו הולך שמסתבלוס. It becomes totally בשרבל צרי עין. When people started to have the evil eye people were envious of one another. צרי עין מלהונס אחר מממונם. Meaning they don't want other people to benefit from their assets. וטורפי טרף טורפי טרף, גזלונים, ממצי לב מן העניים, רכים, people who are thieves, and they have no, they're, they're hard hearted, they don't have any mercy on the poor, you hear this? When the tzari ayin means they don't want to share their wealth with others, the torfi טרף, טרף means they actually, vin, they victimize the poor. רובה ממצי לב, וקוף סיודאים אל הלבוס, so people become hard, hard hardened, and they withdraw their hands from lending. You know, a person's not sensitive, you don't feel the other's pain, you don't lend. Vavrum ha-shukos v'atori, shom ha-lecho, pen. They're in violation of a Torah violation. V'shirobu nitiyaz goron, u-mesakre senayim. When nitiyaz goron, people, the women became uh, long-necked. You know, women, they would walk in a certain posture which was uh, very flirtatious. Mm -hmm. They had their necks up and they would be sacre and they wear all kinds of uh, mascara on their eyes. To beautify their eyes, and they would wink at at the, the single men or other men. Rabbi Maim Morim, yeah, there was a need for for what for this this process to find out whether women committed adultery or not. El Shaposku, but factually it wasn't available. Why? Because if people stop stop behaving properly, the water means nothing. Mishrabu mekabli matonos, nismato ayomim. Yeah, this the niskatsor shom. Once people were out to receive gifts. You know, every, there's an expression, everybody's on the take. Everybody's looking to receive something. People's days were shortened and their years were shortened. It's interesting. It says two things. The days were lessened and the years were cut short. What's the difference between days lessened? What does he say over there? Nismato ayomim v'nizkatsu ayashonim. To go back to the Yehagata, that it what has to do with the physical, the other the spiritual, Olam No. Because the days of his life are full of bitterness and sorrow. Can't be the same thing. I understood. If a person's always looking to, to be given something, right. you're wasting your time. Instead of fully yeah. investing in a day to be productive, right. the day is consumed with, so the day is shortened. Huh. The potential of the day that you're able to be productive it's, it's, it's whittled away with this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the person's life is cut short. That's because it's a Sony Matonus Yichia. That a person, only the person who despises gifts, extends his life. Right. These people, all, that's all they're looking for. Right. Okay. Mishurabu Zachuche Halev. Rabu Machlok Spi Yisrael. Who is Zachuche Halev? She'em Matin Es Oznom Lishmoa Yofe Mipi Rabum. Besomchen al binosel ledaktek shmosim. Hear this. Person gets a snippet from his rebbe, but he doesn't what? He doesn't full. He doesn't listen to his rebbe's explanation. It's like when I give a shir sometimes you say think people they already inserted their own understanding of what I said, which is wrong. Wrong. So he's that's the zachuchelev. It's it's as a result of a little bit of arrogance. 
if you feel you know better, you just need a little bit of information. Whatever is lacking, I'll I'll I'll, I'll add myself. But you know, it's not correct. Your understanding is not is, is not correct. So Mishir Srabu is a chuchel lev rov machloks bisroil. Now, of course, there's argument. You have your understanding. I have my understanding. But if you would have had the Mesorah, where does the Mesorah begin? The Mesorah starts with the Rebbe. Yeah. But they, they, they didn't listen to what the Rebbe had said. Mishrabal Tamidi Shamei Vihilil. Shloshim Shul Kol Tzorchan. Hear this? When there was an increase of the students Shamei Hill, which they did not study sufficiently under Shamei and Hillel. So if you don't study sufficiently, everybody has their own idea of what it's about. Rabba Machlok Hear this? Torah became, arguments increased. Venasa Torah, Kishtei Torah. It became like two religions. Mm -hmm. Everybody had their own religion. Mishirobo Mekabli Tztoko, Mina Ovrei Kochovim. Here, when Jews began accepting charity from Goyim, Ho Yisrael Lemaila Vehim Lemato. Yisrael Lefnim Vehim Locher. Again, Mishirobo Mishirobo Mekabli Tztoko, Mina Kochovim, Ho Yisrael Lemaila Vehim Lemato. Yisrael lefnim v'heim l'mato. What is that? Kino. It's 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 using a. Um, it's saying it in a nice way. You know, we don't want to speak about the Jews in a negative. Whenever we speak about a curse comes upon our enemies, it means God forbid on, on the Jews. It means when Jews started to accept charity from goyim, it's ochen vei. The Jews were on top, and the goyim means just the opposite. The Jews were downtrodden, and the goyim are dictating the lives of the Jews. Yeah. Yisrael lefnim v'heim locher. The Jews are front and they're in the back. No, it's the other way. What about if you have no choice? You have no choice. <coughs> the Jew has to beg from the goy. I mean, that the Jew has to ask from the goy is ochen vei. I mean, it's bad news. I think at one time a Jew would not ask. If a Jew had sufficient bitochon, Right. He would, we're not supposed to be a pikuach nefesh. We're not talking about a person. It's life and death. You ask anybody to, to help you out. We're talking about a Jew would go seek out help from a non-Jew. For a Jew, it's chil Hashem. Why? Because what does the guy say? See the Jews. They don't turn to their own God. They come to us. Mm -hmm. It's chil Hashem. As a result of that, what does Hashem <coughs> say? What, you're disgracing me? You'll be disgraced. You'll be in disgrace. state. You'll be on the modern totem pole. They're going to be on top. Mm. It says... When Yosef ben Yoezer and Yosef ben Nechon Ishu Shalim, when, when they passed away, it was the end of the era. What were they called? They were called Ish Eshkolos. My Eshkolos. I'm reviewed by Shmuel. Ish Akolbo. It's nothing that they didn't possess. They knew everything. Rashi, Torah, Bamito, Meidofi, Vishikho Machlok. You see this? They know Torah according to its true understanding. There's no... Um, lack of, there's no impurity in it, there's no forgetting, they, they retained it, and as a result of that, there's no machlokas. Of course, if you know the Mesorah, you have it down pat, then what happens? Then, of course, there's no machlokas. Hashem will give one Torah, one Torah at Sinai. Right. So, until then, everything was accurate. Everything was retained. Everything was elucidated. Right. Once they passed on, it wasn't that any longer. And that's when the machlokas started. Do you know about when they lived? They were members of their bench in Pirkeovos. Okay? Then it says, Yochum go to Hevet Hodos HaMaser. When Yochum Godel came, there was no longer Vidri Maiser. My time, Om Reb Yosef Rechani Fishei Nosen Osa Ki Tikuno. Here, because people didn't give it, 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 it properly. The Rachman Amar, the Yavi, the Levim. Who do you give Maiser to? You give it to the Levi. Vanad Koivinin L'Kohanim. Instead of giving it to the Levim, they gave it to the Kohanim. He's saying something like this. When the Jews came back from Bovel, the Levim didn't want to come back. So Ezra, who was who led the second <coughs> the second <coughs> commonwealth to build rebuild base Mish, he penalized the Levim for not coming back. Is until now who received the, the Miser? The Levi. A coin is also qualified because a coin is also called a Levi. But it's preferable because the Levi has nothing else but that. He penalized them. He says, because you don't come back, we give you a Maiser, we give to the Kohan. That's what Ezra said. What is, what is the text of Avidi Maiser? The Gavna Satin Levi. I gave the Maiser, but they couldn't say it. 
Why couldn't they say it? Because they didn't give it to the Lev, they gave it to the Kohen. So because they couldn't say that, they stopped saying Vidi Meiser. So when I ask the question, what about the other parts? You give out the other tr- tr- tithes. You give Truma, and you give Meiser Oni, and Meiser Shani. You have all the other part of it. Right. So that's the Mar's question. Velo di Asha'ar, Meiser. What about the other tithes, the other 10%? Omri Shlok, Kobay Shain, Misvadal Meiser, Rishon Shuvay, Misvadal Shar Meiser. Shlok says, if you don't see the full text of the right. confession, you don't say any of it. My time, Omra by a whole possible cause of Tchilo. Since the Torah begins first with, I ge- I've given to the Levi, Mechlada, Frushi, Avi, Mafrishi. So evidently it means you gave it. Votanya, Afu, Bitel, Zavidui, Vogozal, Demai, it says he was, he was, he, he nullified the Vidui and he decreed the Demai, Fisheb, Sholach, Vogol, Gvul, Yisrael, Vroshe, Mafishin, Elotruma, Gedola, Bilvad, Masarish, Masasheni, Mitzosin, Masin, Mitzosin, E Masin, you know, so we'll stop here.